Alright, so today I'm going to try and explain how to set up an autonomous uh, switching junction. And so we're going to start on this um, N8 branch of my network. And we're going to assume that I want to add a new T junction here with one branch going to the right and one to the left coming off of this N8 junction. So in order to do that, you just take a bidirectional rail segment where you have one rail being the... Um, the entryway into the junction and one being the exit. In this case I'm doing driving on the right. So we're going to start with two uh, two branching switches off to, this, to either side and we have these set to 18, uh, 18 blocks in length at a degrees of 45. And so we'll just place those on either end here. And now in order to complete the turn we will place the switches to line up on either end here. Like so. And then the next thing that we have to do is place in the switches that allow us to switch from the in inbound lane onto this N8 branch. And the way we do that is by using a 12 length 90 degree turn spaced with three blocks between the other one and then placed like so to line up. And we do the same thing on the other side like so. And so now we have all the switches that we will need. And so we can go ahead and finish up this junction by filling in all of the remaining um, straight segments. Just a few more. And now we have our completed junction. Now, just as a side note, it does not matter what type of junction you made it. This one is just an example as a perfect orthogonal T-junction. But you could have diagonals, you could have all sorts of things. The premise is exactly the same. It doesn't matter what shape you have, it just has to work. So what we're going to do is actually extend each side off by 32 blocks just to give us some space to work with. And so what we have to note here is which switches we're actually going to need to control. And that depends on what are your incoming, your inbound lanes. And so here we know that train can come in this way and they can go straight, causing them to turn onto here. Meaning we don't need to control this switch, but we do need to control this one, right? Because switching here will turn the train onto that. Um, branch versus not switching forces it onto the other branch. Once again we'll take a look at the other inbound lane and we've got another switch here that we need to worry about. All right. And then finally the last inbound lane we have this switch to worry about. So there are actually only three switches we need to actually control out of the total six. Or yes. No. Yeah I think so. Anyway um, we're going to control these with redstone and so what we need to do is we're going to control them with a torch system down here just a, a little way to get the signal all the way down and then we have a redstone component here so that a computer can interact with it and when we want to control this switch, we're going to need to first um, detect when a train comes and arrives on this uh, this rail, this inbound rail, and have some time to react so we can make the uh, decision to whether to switch or not. So in order to do that, we place the detector a few blocks back. I'm just going to go eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we place the detector there and an adapter underneath and now we can hook it up with the cable and 
this exact setup right here I'm with a redstone dust into a torch into a block into a torch into a block I'm going to copy with all of the remaining switches and I'll get back to you once I'm done all right so I've gone ahead and set up all three of the switches that we're going to be controlling and additionally I've wired them up so that they all join at a central point and then they move off to the side and this is where we're going to place the computer that controls all all of the uh, switches additionally I've also labeled these branches as W10 and W9 this one being N8 um, so what we need to know is that when a train comes in from the N8 branch it, cho it has to choose between either going to W9 or W10. And the way we do that, as discussed in my networking video, is that the train will have a tag set which contains a list of branches that it follows to traverse through a path such as this grid. So for example, if we go from station wheat to where we are now, we could for example take N6, N3, W4, N8, and we'd end up here. Right? That's just one option. We could also do W5, W8, N5, N4, N8, and so forth. This is almost an infinite combinations. But anyway, what we need to do now is essentially give a computer directions for how to decide when to switch. And we want this switch to activate when we want a train to go to W9, essentially meaning that its tag contains the W9 branch in its list of branches. Otherwise, do nothing or do not switch it if we want it to go to W10. And we can do a similar sort of logic for all the other uh, inbound branches. Here we want to switch to N8. Um, if I can, yep, there we go. So essentially activate this switch if we do want to switch to N8. And finally, same thing with this one. Activate this switch if we want to go to N8. So what we're gonna do now that we have everything set up make sure double check that all of these switches are getting activated properly and make sure you have them in the right place and one last thing is don't forget to do this set your immersive railroading detector augment to computer otherwise none of this will work make sure you do this And so everything should be configured. So what I'm going to do now, just because I'm in creative, is I'm going to type... Oh, what am I doing? Here we go. OC spawn computer. And so I need an internet card. Let's see. Let me go find the paste bin link. All right. And we'll call this switch.lua. Oh, that's right. I forgot to install the OS. It's going to do its thing. And once we have the OS installed, we've got a writable uh, drive. We're going to go ahead and install my program to it, switch.lua. That allows us to essentially take it, take stock of which detectors we have and write down the rules for when to switch for each of them. And once that's in, the computer will just run forever and update manually as trains come over the detector. So, now that we're done here, let's reboot and try that again. There we go, switch.lua. And first thing it notes is that there is no switch.tbl file found in the home directory. And this is what the uh, program uses 
as its configuration. So it keeps track of which switches, what addresses it uses to uh, control the redstone components. So because no file was found, we're going to have some first time configuration. So we want to control three switches. So for switch one, what is the address of the detector augment before this switch? So that's why I got this analyzer in hand. It doesn't matter in what order you register these switches. So just pick one as your first one. In this case, we'll do this. Um, here we go. And then what we can do is just copy that to our clipboard, insert it. And now we got to go back over there and get the address of this redstone component. Perfect. What branch does this switch direct traffic to when activated? Well, when this switch is activated, we already discussed that it will send traffic to W9. So I'm going to input that now. And finally, it gives you a summary so you can check to make sure that everything you entered is correct. And finally, it tells you that it will switch when the locomotive's tag contains the string W9. This information is correct. So now we'll go on to switch 2, and we need the address of the IR augment detector and the redstone component. So we can go ahead and add those. First the detector, and then the redstone component. And this one, when activated, switches on to N8. So we're going to write that here. Yes. And the last one. So let's get our detector and our redstone. And the address of the detector is that. And the address of the redstone is that. And once again, just like the second switch, this third switch will also, when activated, d direct traffic to N8. So we can. Go ahead and enter that now. Yes. And so now it's saved this switch definition to switch.tbl. And then it loads it from the file, resets all the switches to their starting positions, and begins to run the program. So now we have all these switches activated. So. If I manage to get a train all the way over here, I think that we could test this out. So screen, we'll see that we did encounter an approaching locomotive with this tag, and we know that it contains W9, so the locomotive wants to go into the W9 branch, so we switch it over that way. And so yeah, the setup works with um, a three-way junction, a four-way junction, as I do in many other places, five-way, six-way, seven, eight, as many as you can come up with. If you can build a junction that can support that many uh, two-lane IO, I guess, terminals, then go for it. it this will work. Um, but, I mean, good luck actually getting the trains to behave over weird bits of track like this. For some reason, this works out well. However, other people seem to encounter problems when they start to do manual crossover sections. So just do that at your own risk and know that if you're going to go forth with a um, 
four-way junction. Use the exact same sizes of switches as I've used here. You use a 12, length 12 of a um, 90 degree switch here and two switches both of which are at a 45 degree angle and have a length of 18 and that should get you a four-way junction if we just added a second uh, a third um, option out there but yeah that's it if you have any other questions leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and get to get to it as soon as possible thanks for watching